Christopher Ward recently sent me their new release, the C63 Celeste. This is a traditionally sized 36 millimeter sports piece with a lovely and dynamic adventuring dial that dazzles and sparkles. Uh, it just looks great. Now, personally, I'm a big fan of adventuring. I recently bought this C1 Moon Phase that has the same copper oxide infused glass dial. Adventuring was first made in Murano, Italy in the 1600s, but it has only recently become more of a popular material for watch dials, and there will be two different types of adventuring dials. One is this one in front of the camera, which I think most watch collectors think of when they hear the word adventurine. And the second one is less common, but it's a natural mineral that was discovered in the 1800s that sparkles in a similar manner. In fact, because it looks so uh, so similar to adventurine glass, it was named adventurine after this glass that was, again, developed over 100 years prior. And I think Rolex is really the predominant brand that uses uh, the natural mineral adventurine. For Christopher Ward's formula of adventurine, they take a deep red ruby glass and then they mix it with a brown red purpurin glass and then they add the copper flakes. So the copper oxide helps bring the final color of this blend to a deep blue that uh, skews on the warmer side. So from certain angles, you almost think you see a hint of purple, but it's so beautiful. Uh, Christopher Ward calls this galaxy blue. It's a delicate and gorgeous material, and I'm happy to see the brand utilizing it. Now, this C63 has what Christopher Ward calls the light catcher case. So it has crown guards, a thread down sign crown, 150 meters of water resistance, and then a good mix of brushing and polishing when it comes to the finish work. I think this light catcher case complements the adventuring dial and then this consort bracelet very well. It sits low and flat on wrist. It has a short lug to lug dimension of only 43 millimeters. And I think this is on the smaller end of my own watch comfort zone. Uh, but the crown guards and the 20 millimeter lugs help this piece feel a little bit more like a 37 millimeter while it's on wrist. And to me, if I had to compare it to another watch, it's very similar to how a pre five digit Rolex Datejust wears in 36 millimeters. Now within the case is an Elabor grade Solita. It's the SW200-1 movement. There is no ghost date position in the thread down crown. And this has 26 jewels a 4 hertz beat frequency, and 38 hours of power reserve. When it comes to accuracy, there is an acceptable daily deviation rate of plus or minus 20 seconds. The rotor has twin flag repeating finishing that complements the twin flag embossed crown and then that applied twin flags logo on the adventuring dial. Like all Christopher Ward models, this watch has a five-year movement warranty and you will be able to view it behind a Sapphire exhibition case back. Uh, so uh, there is a small space here if you notice that you can opt for custom engraving by Christopher Ward. And I did opt for that with my C1 Moon Phase that I recently purchased. Now, taking a closer look at the dial, this adventurine just looks fantastic. Personally, I like non-traditional dials. I love meteorites. I love a full loom dial. I like ceramic dials or various semi-precious stone dials. So adventuring is just right up my alley. And I think, you know, collectors, after you have secured your versatile, conservative, day-to-day -day type of watch or watches, it's very enjoyable to branch out into some of these dynamic non-traditional dial materials or finishes. I think it's one of the fun things about collecting watches. And one of the fun things about this dial is from across the room, it appears like a rather basic black dial, but it's when you get closer or angle it in the light that all of the dynamic properties and the color of the adventuring become apparent. The markers are applied. They're polished and beveled, as is the handset. The hands have SLN X1 BLC1 for the Loom formula, so it's nice and bright. 
Uh, it's white in natural light, but it's only found on the hour hand and the minute hand. It's not found on the hour markers, and there will be no minute indexing. The only text found on the dial is automatic that's under the hand stack and Swiss made that's under the six o'clock marker. So this dial looks balanced. It looks elegant. For my own taste, I could do without the automatic designation, but I don't think that's a deal breaker. Now, taking a closer look at the bracelet, Christopher Ward calls this the consort bracelet. It's a true five-piece construction with 127 individual links. The sides will be polished, as are the second and fourth rows when it comes to the links. The rest of the bracelet is brushed, and it does reflect a lot of light when you do a wrist roll, especially in natural light. The clasp is a butterfly style, and the solid end links have quick release spring bars. The bracelet is pretty similar in style to an IWC five link bracelet, though this will be thinner, and it has a little bit more lateral flexibility. I think some will find this more comfortable than the heavier IWC style that's more rigid. Uh, these links are held together with screw pins. And then lastly, if you don't like this consort bracelet, Christopher Ward does offer this watch on an oyster-like Bader bracelet or a dark blue Italian leather option. The prices are $895 for the leather, $1,075 for the Bader, and $1,090 for the consort, which is my favorite. Now I'll wrap up this video with my own opinions about the positives and the negatives. Starting with the negatives, I think 36 millimeters is just a little bit too small for many watch collectors. While I have no real issue with the size, it's not my first choice. Christopher Ward does make the light catcher case in 39 millimeters, which I would wager would be a more welcome case size for the majority of watch collectors. So hopefully that's something that they consider for future releases. The other thing that came to mind is the acceptable accuracy of the Solita movement. Plus or minus 20 seconds per day is close to Seiko levels of accuracy. And I expect a little more from Christopher Ward. This watch is running at plus four seconds per day, which is great, but I would be a little cranky if it was running at say, plus 19 seconds per day, to the degree that I would want a watchmaker to tighten it up if it was running at the outside edge of those specifications. As far as the positives go, I think this is a beautiful watch. The dial is gorgeous. The bracelet is really well made. The light catcher case wears nicely. I think the details are sharp, and it even comes in a hefty bamboo wood watch presentation box that has an included microfiber cleaning cloth. Christopher Ward as a brand, in my opinion, has just been on fire lately. It seems like every release they come out with is a little bit better than the last one. So I'm excited to see what they do next because I think they're going in a positive direction at a quick rate. So let me know if you have any questions. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, I would really appreciate if you could like it and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching today.